you know, this is a verse that's used by Christianity by everybody all the time, over and over and over again. The truth shall make you free. What truth are they talking about? I think normally, and I'm not mocking them, normally I think they're talking about just the truth that Messiah came, died, and was resurrected. That's it. Isn't that about right? That truth will make you free. So if you understand something historically that happened as factual, all of a sudden you're free from all this stuff. You're just going to be set free. Oh, that's ridiculous. He's saying your relationship with me. Well, Christianity might think that that's what they're doing too. But the relationship is based on certain criteria that they ignore, which is obedience. If you love me, guard, keep my commandments. So the relationship is a relationship of submissive obedience, trusting obedience. And so that's what sets you free because now you're no longer slaves to what brings about all of the bad stuff, which is sin. Now you are servants of righteousness. Let's go back to the, the little three or four point thing I gave you with Revelation, three points, right? Revelation is what? Information revealed to you. Okay, so information was revealed to you. You may not like it or agree with it, so then you might not receive it. Step two is for it to be useful is for you to receive it. The information is, okay, so you found out Christmas and Easter weren't in your Bible and they were from pagan origin. Okay, that's information. How long did it take you to stop keeping them? Some of you, it took a little while. Even though you knew, but you didn't know. You didn't have the relationship. You had information. It had been revealed to you. It was revealed to you that the Sabbath was correct on Saturday, not on Sunday. How long did it take for you to switch? It took the time it takes to go from information to receiving the information to the third step, taking action based on that information. So the truth making you free. The truth makes you grows you, develops you, molds you. It makes you free. Not just frees you up. But when you start taking in that revelation of truth, start receiving it and applying it, it makes you into a free person. You become, okay? You're living a life of becoming, okay? You are and you are becoming. You are whatever you are at this moment, but you're becoming something else, something greater. You're becoming, hopefully, you're becoming him. And by the way, go back to the teaching on sin. What is sin? Okay, sin is that which causes harm, suffering, pain, misery, right? At least the perception of it. So if you're in any of those things that I define sin as from scripture, and you focus on those things, he can set you free from that. A relationship with him, not like Christianity teaches. I mean, an actual relationship. What's the relationship he wants? He wants a relationship of trust obedience. He doesn't want you just to be like, oh, ooey gooey, I just love my Messiah. And he looks at you like, but where's the works to demonstrate that? You know, I, let's say I'm married to my wife, and I can just tell her all the time, I'm just so happy and love you and everything else, but I don't do a thing for her or, or do anything that she wants or anything that pleases her, but I just walk around telling her, I just love you so much. Is that really going to work for her? Oh, we're not saved if we don't receive with meekness this implanted word. Implanted meaning he opened your mind so he can put this thing there that you could receive but you have, to, you have to receive it. And you gotta receive it with meekness. You gotta be humble and receive it with meekness. He says, look, and become doers of the word and not hearers only, deceiving yourselves. Christians, I'm not picking on you, you've been lied to. But you're hearing and not doing. If you read anything from Genesis, you know, to Malachi in your Bibles, and you're not doing that stuff, you're hearers and not doers. Oh, well, that was done away with. Now, no, you're listening to man. Okay, God never said any of that nonsense. Man did, okay? God didn't say, well, you gotta keep my commands until my son shows up and then we'll just get rid of this stuff because it's too hard for you anyway. I don't know how James ended up in your New Testament, all you Christians who think that works are bad and evil, it's a four-letter word, blah, 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 okay? Because this is a man who's absolutely just pounding 
If you're not doing and just, then you're not, you're not getting it. If you're not doing, you're not getting it. He says, your, 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 your belief is worthless. All right? But he called the law, the law of freedom. Ah, John 8, 36. Okay? He says, you will know the truth and the truth shall make you free. What's the truth? The law, the tr the, that's the truth. The word is truth, the Torah is truth. All throughout the Old Testament is the truth. James is saying the same thing Yeshua said in John. They're not talking about different things. Christians, I'm sorry, you can't argue with this. You can't. You can reject it because it doesn't match your reality at the moment. And people look at me and like, well, that's absurd. Really, is it? Why is that absurd? Why is it wrong to kill you? Well, because God said so. Oh, but you did away with that. Why is it wrong for me to accuse you of something you didn't do? Well, because God said so. Oh, no, I'm sorry, you did away with that. Why is it wrong for me to steal your stuff? Well, because God said so. Oh, no, no, you did away with that. Where are you drawing the line? What gives you the authority? The ego and the pride of all you pastors out there that are preaching this garbage, who do you think you are? Okay, I'm going to tell you right now. This is simple, logical, legal. A thus said, the federal government cannot be overridden by the local city. It's a federal law, it has to be a federal change. So a thus said Yahweh can only be changed by, guess what? A thus said Yahweh. Please show me a thus said Yahweh that did away with anything he ever said. Well, Max, well, you're so sure. You know what? I'm just reading from here. I'm telling you what it says. I'm not making anything up. Everything I say is right here. Oh, what they say is right there. No, it's not. No, it's not. You want to show me Christmas in here? Please show me. Show me anybody keeping Christmas. Show me anybody keeping Easter. Show me anybody keeping Sunday. There's not a single verse showing any of that. Show me anybody eating unclean food. Please show me. I can show you everybody keeping holy days, the Levitical 23 holy days, all throughout the New Testament. I can show you them eating clean. I can show you whole discussions about clean and unclean where they're eating clean. Well, well, what about, you know, with Peter, you know, in that sheet? Well, he was talking metaphorically about people, and it says it right in the verse that it had nothing to do with food. Just read what it says for crying out loud. He says, look, you, got, you say you have belief? And I have works. I say, I'll show you my belief by my works. He said, your belief without works is garbage. It's not belief. But you don't want to hear that. You don't want to hear, oh, we're set free and we don't have to do anything and Jesus did it all for us and, all right. The devil did all the bad things. Where's the character development in any of that? Where's the transformational factors in all of that? And if that's all true, what is he waiting for? Because obviously we're all, we're all arrived. All we got to do is figure out the devil did all the bad things and Jesus did all the good things. That's it. So we're good. That took five seconds to figure out. So why are we all still around? Why are generations still being born? Because you have to go through a process of developing into him. Well, what does that look like? <laughs> he tells us. It's right here. He says, and you shall hear, O Israel, and shall guard to do. Do you, do you think he's wasting his breath? Or, oh, I'm sorry, we're going to be dispensational and say, well, that was for them. Okay, but who are the them? Oh, I know. They're his chosen people. Who are you? Nobody. Now, you can be somebody by choosing to graft into the chosen people. But otherwise, you're nobody. Don't get mad at me. But you're, you are demeaning this relationship he has here. He's talking to the people he chose. Right? This is the people that at Sinai he says, I am choosing you. If you will hear and do what I say, I will raise you up above all nations. I have chosen you as my own. Now, here's the good news. Everybody can become a part of that. But until you do, you're nobody. <laughs>